The Miami Hurricanes have been let down way too many times over the years by subpar play in the trenches. We know this. So here's how Mario Cristobal is going to fix it. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, including pregame and postgame for the Miami Hurricanes. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen every day. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts, including Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, and free on YouTube as well. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So guys, June right around the corner we've talked about how many official visits are happening we've got to talk about how mario cristobal who's a former offensive lineman once an o-lineman always an o-lineman how much emphasis he and alex mirabal are putting into recruiting and revolutionizing the trench play that goes for the offense and the defense as well so let's bring in very good friend of the show this is one of our recruiting insiders one of our canes insiders fitting that he's from canesinsight.com Brad Tejeda is with us. Brad, how you been, sir? Alex, thank you again, as always, man. You know, it's always a pleasure to hop on and talk some Canes football with you. Oh, man, it's it's always great having you. And so let's get into the offensive line, Brad, because June's going to be a really busy month. Now, Miami already has a couple of verbal commits for the class of 2023 on the offensive line. And I love following these dudes on Twitter because they are preaching the gospel. They're so enthusiastic. When I see tweets of people like Antonio Tripp and Frankie Tinelau in that class of 2023, these guys are just inspiring. And so, Brad, who do you think is going to be joining them as commits for 2023? I hope you have some good news on Peyton Kirkland, who I absolutely love and some of the others that are coming in in June. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. I mean, when you talk about, when you bring in Mario Cristobal and others, you know, on this offensive staff, we knew right away that the offensive line and the defensive line had to bulk up tremendously. It started in the offseason with the transfer portal on both sides of the ball, bringing in some instant impact guys. And now you're seeing it on the recruiting front, right? You you mentioned the two that we uh, currently have committed. And when you look up those guys, man, their personalities um, are just as great as what they're doing on the football field, too. And I think those guys are going to be anchors to this recruiting class. You mentioned a few names. First one right off the bat, Peyton Kirkland, 2023 offensive lineman. He has a lot of big visits coming up uh, here in June. June 3rd through June 5th, he's at Oklahoma. Then he goes to Florida, I believe, the week after. um, And then goes to Michigan State. And I believe his last visit, if I'm not mistaken, Alex, is going to be with Miami on June 20th through June 22nd. And, and Brad, just as a side note, like we, uh, another one of our, our recruiting insiders, our guy, John Garcia Jr., he always says this, when you get those OVs, you want to be first or last. Like you want to have either the first or last, you don't want to be in the middle. Absolutely, man. Being being last, you know, we kind of get that last leg up and that last swing for a guy like Pey- Peyton Kirkland. That's going to be huge. And you talk about huge, there's a lot of big other guys that we're going after, especially a guy in Madden Sanker out of Douglasville, Georgia. He's about 6'4", 6'5", 305 pounds. He was just the Rivals Camp MVP on the offensive line. And it really seems like Georgia and Miami is a two-headed battle for that guy. As you see on social media, Madden Sanker is one of those guys who, wherever he ends up going, he was very verbal about saying, wherever I commit, I am going to be one of the lead recruiters on this front. And I think our guy Tripp had something to say about it. So the camaraderie between the two, getting those guys on is going to be big. But when you talk about camaraderie, the next guy I'm talking about is Francis Moyoga, 6'5", 330-pound IMG five-star offensive lineman. This guy is the second offensive tackle in the nation, eighth overall prospect in the nation. And as we know, he is the nephew of Coach Salvea on the defensive line for Miami. Um, so that is going to be a big name to watch. He is by far the biggest name target for the offensive line that Miami has gone after since Evan Neal, another IMG uh, guy as well. But as we know, that IMG to Alabama pipeline is going to be something to watch out for. Miami and USC is also involved. Um, but other than those three big names, you also got Monroe Freeling, um, who our guy Gabby reported will be at Miami June 24th. And then we also have Logan Holland, 6'7", 285-pound guy from New Jersey. 
Um, he has a top four of Iowa, Michigan, Miami, and Oklahoma, and he will also be at Miami in June 16th. So when you talk about the offensive line alone, Alex, you're talking about big, bulkier guys, uh, everyone over 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, hitting that 300-pound mark. That is something that we're not used to in years past, and I think that's going to be the standard moving forward with the offensive line. Yeah, it's one of those things, Brad, and and like I've had a lot of conversations with people who cover Oregon, right, since Cristobal arrived, and some of them are salty, right? Some of them are kind of, you know, now that Cristobal's gone, they're like, oh, this guy's a terrible game day coach, we, we can do so much better now, we're better off, so that it, 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 whether they're salty or not, to a man, everybody I've talked to who covers Oregon tells me, one place you're going to be in great shape for the coming years is going to be the O-line. He's going to recruit the heck out of that position. He and Alex Mirabal are going to coach the heck out of that position. So at least, Brad, I think we can say with a certain level of confidence that whatever other issues may arise on the field over the next few years, one issue that's not going to be an issue much longer is going to be the trench play. The pool of offensive linemen that we currently are, are able to swim through right now, Alex, is a lot deeper. We're, we're in a lot of bigger, deeper end than we were before. We, we were swimming in the shallow end for years. And now it looks like we got a big pool of guys where we could be able to choose and pick from. So there are, uh, we know, we stick to the trenches. I mean, there's a lot of, and I know something that you and I both wanted to talk to are some of the uh, the quote-unquote athletes for 2023 that Miami's recruiting, right? And, and a lot of these guys project out to be DNs. A couple guys who really excite me, uh, Miami is considered a finalist for five-star athlete Nicholas Harbor, who's from the D.C. area, uh, he is a track stud. He's big as well. He's six foot six. And I'm, I watch videos of this guy running the 100. And he's like twice as tall as anybody else running. And he's the long strides. He's so quick. So that's one that I'm really looking at. Uh, one that we did talk about in a recent episode, but I want to get your take. He's got a late June visit coming up. Collins Achampo, who's uh, from Ghana, but he's now living in Anaheim, California, came to this country, six foot seven, came to America to play basketball. I think he's deciding football might be the way to go from him. He projects out as a defensive end as well. What can you tell me about these guys and any other athletes Miami is going after? Yeah, just to t touch on Collins, um, I believe you and our guy, John Garcia, touched on him a, a lot um, in a previous episode. But with him, he is a, a very raw talent, right? You're still going to have something that you're going to have to work with, but he has the size and the stature that you're going to need. Um, again, we talk about having that first or last visit. I think it's going to be very key for Miami. Um, they're in a very good spot where with a lot of defense alignment to where if they don't end up getting some of the bigger fish, I think they could go all in on someone like Collins since they indeed do have the last visit. So that's something to look out for. Now, as far as Nicole's Harbor, man, I tell you what, when you look at this guy's tape, he is an instant impact player, and he's a fan favorite immediately when you turn on his tape, whether it's football, track, regardless. Um, and you go back in, into his recruiting days, just going back you know, at the age of six years old, his dad said in a recent um, article um, that he wanted to play soccer or basketball at a young age. They tried it out. Nichols was way too tall, way too big for it. And they started to see a very early stage of asthma. So a doctor told him, hey, how about we turn to track and see what's going on? And track, obviously, well, was what got him going. Um, if you ask him who his favorite athletes, it's Bo Jackson, it's Usain Bolt, it's LeBron James. It's the it's the one of one type guys where he wants to do multi things. He doesn't just want to fit into one one position, one sport. He wants to do it all. Um, his dad is a Nigerian uh, Nigerian descent who played soccer for the U.S. team back in the day, I believe. Um, and I know he's a huge Mario fan. Um, who wants to play the defense and position. And as you mentioned, ran a 10-28 in the 100 meter, 27-6 in the 200 meter. So this guy is lights out. Um, my my thing with him is, is, is he going to have a, a stronger suit playing track or going into yeah. to, uh, to playing football? Because if he does go play football, I think he's going to have to bulk up a little bit regardless where he goes based off the position. Um, and if he goes and plays track, I, I think I think he's an instant Olympian um, right away. So that's going to be key to look out for. Yeah, that's huge as well. Anything else we should be looking out for, uh, especially like defensive tackle, because we've been talking about pass rushing guys, exterior guys. Well, what about DTs? So, yeah, when it comes to the, the defensive line group, um, you, you got a guy like a David Hicks, who you touched on a, a couple of episodes ago, who's got an official visit to uh, Miami June 10th through June 12th. But 
it's, it's really the pass rushers for me. Um, not necessarily yeah. defensive tackles, but some of these pass rushers that could play um, the inside or the outside is going to be extremely uh, focused on as far as what you want to watch out for. You got a guy in Anthony James from Wiley, Texas, um, who just decommitted from Texas A&M, um, 6'5", 245 pounds. You also got Darren Reed, um, who's from Carver High, Georgia. He's got Miami in his top six. And then, of course, you go to the other side. You got someone in Las Vegas of Kelsey Howard. Um, who just mentioned Miami in his top eight. And uh, Ashton Porter is a is an interesting one to look out for from Cy Ranch, Texas. Um, you turn on his tape, he does something different and brings something to the table that we don't see very often with some de- some of the defensive linemen. And Tavion Gatson, um, that was a new offer recently, 6'5", 265 pounds from Chinkins High School, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, those are some of the names you want to look out for. And, of course, the obvious, you know, you got your Derek LeBlancs. Um, who who's going to be taking his decision quite further on. So I, I would wait out on someone like him. He's got M- Florida, Miami, Alabama, a bunch of other teams in the mix. We got Brad Tejeda from Kane's Insight with us. And guys, you want to keep it locked because business is going to pick up on the other side. We have to talk about Alonso Highsmith, how this got done seemingly very quickly. This wasn't something, and I know that there have been rumors and reports about Zoe going back the past couple of years, but as far as it getting done last week, that very much flew under my radar. So we got to talk about that, how it's going to impact recruiting, and also we got to talk quarterback recruiting with Brad Tejeda as well. And guys, make sure you are locked with our partners, Bet Online. Bet Online continues to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. And guys, man, I look at odds like Miami plus 500 to win the ACC. I think there's a lot of value there, right? I look at you know Miami's win total over under eight and a half. I find some value on the over. You can find all of this at Bet Online. It is your continued source for all your sporting wagering info from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. I'm on there literally every day. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Canes your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out Locked On Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, plus big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Alex Dono alongside Brad Tejeda here on Locked On Canes. Now, Brad, we've had rumors and reports going back over two years about Alonzo Highsmith, right? Before he ultimately, this past week, got hired as GM of football operations. After the 2019 season, he was rumored to be coming for essentially that same role. It didn't happen. We've talked about the reasons why. Uh, About six months ago, he was rumored to be in the mix for the athletic director job. I think ultimately Miami made the right hire with Dan Radakovich. Uh, But I think GM of football operations is perfect for Alonzo Highsmith. This, at least the timing of it, caught me by surprise. Did this catch you by surprise? And how long do you think this was in the works? Yeah, as far as catching me by surprise, I I think the only thing maybe could be to some people was just the timing of it. Um, But when you you dig back deep into this, man, like you said, this goes back years back. Um, this this hire seems very similar to the Mario Cristobal hire, man. Just something that you seen like it, it was coming into fruition for years. It was just only a matter of time to happen. We always knew Mario Cristobal needed to be the head coach for the University of Miami. And I think we always knew that Alonzo Highsmith had to be some part of the University of Miami when it came to the, the front office of the football team. And Zoe is another guy who, who's going to come in, set the set the tone and bring back the standard of what it means to be a university of Miami hurricane. This is a number, another Columbus grad, um, 1983 national champion. As we all know, this is another guy with a ton of experience, similar to Dan Radakovich. When you're able to bring an athletic director that has already proven, have has already done things from another program, build the ground back up with what he did with Clemson. And then you bring in another guy under him to kind of oversee everything in football and Alonzo Highsmith, this is a guy that has a ton of experience as well. 2012, started out with the Green Bay Packers, then ended up with the Cleveland Browns, and as we know, finished his NFL career uh, at, at the Seattle Seahawks. So, I mean, he never lost a connection with Miami, in my opinion. Um, when, when you look back, especially last year um, in itself and the year prior when I believe Miami played Florida and Orlando, 
Um, Melvin Bratton and Alonzo Highsmith was very high on the crowded app that they were launching um, into the area. And Miami was a, a program indeed that always backed them up, um, whether it was the University of Miami or just guys in the front office. So he always had connections and relationships with those guys. And it was just a matter of time till we pulled the trigger the right way on Alonzo Highsmith. And, and it's great to have him back. Yeah, it is. And you you touched on the experience that he has working in NFL front offices and, you know, his background is in scouting. Right. So that's why I'm so interested to see exactly what his role is going to entail. Like I know Miami touched on it in their press release, but how big a part, Brad, of his role, because he's going to wear a lot of hats, but how big like scouting recruits, how big a part of his role do you think that's going to be, right? How how big is Alonso Highsmith's addition for recruiting? I think ultimately it's it's almost like having that that extra teacher in the room, right? You, ha you have your your one teacher that when, whenever things go wrong, if you need him to, to go over there and check your homework or check what you did and see if you got the correct answers, you go to her. But when, when she's busy, you got to go to the, ne the next teacher involved that, that you can able, be able to see if everything's done right. And I think when you talk about the recruiting aspect alone and what you're going to be looking for in players, Mario Cristobal it already does a fine job at that. He has already surrounded himself with a bunch of guys on the staff that does the same thing. The fact that now we have someone else that is overseeing all that, it's going to relieve a lot of pressure on some of these guys to literally just get up and go and do what they got to do and have a guy at the end – to just kind of do that final check off and make sure everything's where it needs to be. And I think a way that this is like really going to low key help Miami in recruiting, even if it's not a direct thing, it's more of an indirect thing. Um, and Miami mentioned in the press release that, you know, part of his gig is going to be like the liaison between the Miami hurricanes and the NFL, given he's got his NFL experience and NFL connections. So if I'm a recruit and I look at it that, Hey, you know, one of the guys at the top of the food chain running Miami's football program is someone who, um, you know, for a decade was working in NFL front offices. His scouting background goes even back two decades, building those NFL relationships. You know, this guy is going to know how to like sell us to the next level and maybe help us get drafted or get drafted higher than we would. So I think that's part that can help this as well. Look, in the matter of six months, we have turned around this football program from top to bottom. And if we start winning football games the right way and we start blowing teams out the way the University of Miami is supposed to, and we start winning big football games when it matters most, the Alabamas, the Clemsons, the LSUs, they better watch out. <laughs> yes. Now, one more thing on Zoe. I want to touch on here and I shared this uh, on our Saturday episode. I will never forget one of the like on the record conversations that I had with Alonzo Highsmith. That's why I do not mind bringing this up because this was this was on the radio. Anybody could listen to this. Um, he was like preaching the gospel to us on a Miami Hurricanes pregame show eight years ago about because I asked him, so how do we bring Miami back, right? Because this this was during the Al Golden years, so obviously things weren't going that well. And I asked Alonzo Heisman, how do we bring things back? And something he kept bringing up was they need their own stadium. Like, we need our own stadium. And I was actually surprised when I brought up this story on Saturday, I was surprised at how much pushback I got in the comments. A lot of the comments were people saying, like, drop the stadium crap. We don't need it. Hard Rock is a world-class NFL facility. I never want to hear you talking about stadiums again. It is a really nice facility now, especially after the renovations, because this conversation I had with Zoe, that was pre-big-time renovation. So I don't know if his opinion has changed, but I, do, I did speak to him on the record about how important their own stadium is. You know, I know, you know, Mario Cristobal, uh, he was a big part of the push when he was at FIU to get their own football stadium. You know, Dan Radakovich comes from a program that has their own football stadium. Do you think, Brad, that, you know, Alonzo Highsmith added to this mix that they're really going to push for Miami to get their own stadium? Yeah, I do. I mean, when you mentioned Radakovich, what he's done at Clemson, what Mario um, was able to kick in gear over at Oregon, and again, how vocal Alonzo Highsmith is. I think it's only a matter of time until the University of Miami gets their own football stadium. But I think first and foremost, we got to get back to the University of Miami football, the standard of what it takes to wear that orange and green helmet. And I think it's got to start there. I think once we start winning football games, it doesn't matter where we play. It's going to get packed. It's going to be a sellout. You, you go a few years back, 
You know, I, I went to the back to back games, Notre Dame, Virginia Tech. And those were two of the most electrifying crowds I've been around in quite some time. And I even went to the Clemson Miami game a couple of years back at Clemson. And that stadium was rocking as well. But that Virginia Tech Notre Dame atmosphere in the hard rock was something else. It, it absolutely was. All right, guys, keep it locked here. When we come back, we're going to talk with Brad Tejada circling back to recruiting on potential quarterback commits for the class of 2023. You do not want to miss it. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts, available free on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, whether you listen audio or you watch video, make sure you subscribe to our channel. All right, so uh, my, Miami is in the mix for some big-time quarterbacks in the class of 2023, one that everybody talks about. Um, I know you and I are not that optimistic on landing him, but Miami is a finalist for Jaden Rashada from California, one of seven finalists for him. Um, you know, Dante Moore from Michigan gets talked about a lot. He's a five-star. Rashad is a five-star as well. Now, you have told me recently, and I've learned more about this quarterback thanks to your suggestion, that you really like Emery Williams from the Florida Panhandle, that that is someone else in the mix for 2023. So what do you make of the quarterback landscape? And ultimately, who do you think Miami lands? Yeah, I mean, first, right off the bat, when you go to the top of the list, Dante Moore, I mean, you, you, you talk about – a guy who has a offer from every single program. Every program wants him as that QB one. It's going to be very tough to beat some of the the other, you know, competition that Miami is going up against. This is a guy, you know, from Detroit, Michigan. Michigan's obviously very high on his board. He's also flirting with teams like Oregon, Notre Dame, and LSU. So I don't necessarily think Dante Moore is going to make the cut for Miami as far as being that quarterback. And then when you go to Jaden Rashada, um, when he first got on the scenes. It was the Miami Hurricane, you know, fans, along with the Miami Immortals, you know, shout out to Coach Duasso, who really put Jaden Rashada on that map as far as getting a lot more programs involved. Obviously, what he does on the football field and his arm strength is tremendous. But when you look at his final group, it's really going to come down to Oregon, Miami, Ole Miss, and I would say even Florida. Um, I think that that extra visit with Florida is something to watch out for, like I said before. But June 18th is going to be when he makes that commitment. So we'll, we'll see. Um, he has visited Miami a few times. I don't believe he will be visiting Miami again. Um, but you go to Emory Williams, who I, I mentioned to you quite a while ago. Um, this is a 6'4", 190-pound kid. He doesn't have the star rating that the other two have. But when you turn on the tape, he kind of reminds you of Trevor Lawrence. Um, whether he looks like him, whether he throws like him, whether he has the mechanics – the young man has a very great arm. He's super intelligent, has a very good quarterback mindset. Like you said, he's outside of the uh, Pensacola Panhandle and Milton High School. Um, his offer list right now, it doesn't look, look as sexy as the other guys, right? You're not getting the Alabamas, the, the Floridas, the Ole Miss, but you are getting some of these other programs that Miami seem to have trouble with every other year in the years past where there's always that quarterback was like, where did this guy come from? And it always ends up being – in your backyard or somewhere in the state of Florida where you're like, man, this kid's got an arm. He's thrown for 40, 50 passes against us, throwing 300 yards. We needed to get someone like him. And he is someone that kind of reminds me of that. Um, he does have offers from Pittsburgh, Toledo, South Florida, Arkansas State, and a few others. But Emory Williams is the guy to look out for, in my opinion. Um, he did just push back his commitment date. I do believe he's probably waiting for the Jaden Rashada uh, news to see if he indeed becomes a Miami Hurricane. If he doesn't, um, I, I would point towards Emory Williams to be that guy. Oh, I, I love it. This is tremendous info. Uh, I want to bring it full circle here with Brad Tejeda from canesinsight.com because we talked about what may be coming in to the offensive line 2023. What about what we have in 2022? And they did bring in a couple of transfers from Oregon, friends of Mario Cristobal, which, which can help. I believe coaching can help. But how much do you think there's going to be an immediate impact, right? How do you project the offensive line in 2022? How much better are they going to be than the last couple of years? Man, I think we got some very insightful guys in this transfer portal that I think can make very quick impacts for this football team. You talk about, you know, what, what someone like Jalen Phillips did to this football team just a year ago. Um I think someone like Mitchell Gude or Akeem Ezador, those are the two names to watch out for, man. I, 
they they got NFL prospect written all over them. I think it's just a matter of how much they want to raise that draft stock um, in the next year or two. But I think I think Miami's in a very good setup, not only roster wise, but what the coaches are bringing to the table. You got three defensive line coaches, you know, uh, that that can really do a lot for this young Miami football team. I love it, Brad Tejeda. You want to make sure you follow him on Twitter at Tejeda Brad. Check out his work at CanesInsight.com. And uh, and yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be speaking, I'm sure, pretty frequently when the commits start to roll in and all these OVs coming up in the month of June. And this is we're gonna be talking a lot of recruiting the next month. I hope you guys are okay with that, right? I right. I, I hope I hope that everybody who watches these videos and listens to the audio wherever you get your podcast that. It is recruiting season. Brad, thank you so much for taking the time. Anytime, man. And uh, congratulations to some of the new coaches for University of Miami, man. Uh, John Williams was a former Rice uh, director, player personnel. That's a big name to watch out for. And then Evan Dorsett, who uh, was the defensive line graduate assistant role. Um, he, he's going he's gonna to be really good as well. So shout out to them. Beautiful. Yeah, and, and that, I'm glad you said that because I, I see all these – announcements and every time I see these names I follow them on Twitter and like they don't get talked about like the support staff um, they don't get talked about enough right because we spend so much time on the head coach and the coordinators and some of the position coaches it's it's it, the whole operation man everything is so important from the ground up and it really is a family that they are building there so huge shout out thank you guys so much for listening uh, we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today now make your second listen the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast Raphael Barlow Richard Stamen Sam Ferris and Leif Tulin give fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects the latest player rankings and of course big boards Follow Locked On NBA Big Board every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Memorial Day. We will be back tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Canes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.